Hi, this is Sesh Venugopal. Welcome to part two of implementing a heap in Java. In part one, we learn how to do sift ups and sift downs in a heap, and also how the heap items are stored in an array in level order sequence. If you haven't watched part one, you should do it now before continuing. In this lesson, we will first prepare for the implementation by seeing how the sift ups and sift downs on the heap structure relate to the movement of items in the array storage. Once we have this mapped out, we will outline the code for sift up and sift down, then finish up the implementation by building a complete heap class and testing it out. Here's an example of sift up. The heap items are in an array in which there is room to add three more items. When 12 is added, a new node is created after the rightmost node at the last level, and this node becomes the left child of the node 9. Since items are stored in level order sequence in the array, the new item 12 is added to the end of the array. Let's use index k to track the location of 12, which is to be sifted up. We need to compute the location of the 12's parent, which is an index k minus 1 divided by 2. Since k is 9, the parent index p is 9 minus 1, which is 8, divided by 2, which is 4. The item at this index is 9. 12 is compared with 9, and since it is greater, they switch places. Sift up now moves up to the next level in the heap. This is affected in the array by moving the index k to the place of p, after which p is recomputed as 4 minus 1, which is 3, divided by 2, which is 1.5, truncated down to 1. 12 and 10 are compared, and since 12 is greater, they switch places. Once again, sift up moves up a level in the heap, and in the array, k moves up to take over from p, and p is recomputed. When 12 is compared to 15 and found to be not greater, the sift up process comes to an end. This is the code for the sift up method. The heap is stored in an array list called items. Initially, k is set to the index of the last entry in the array list, which is the one to be sifted up. The while loop spins as long as k is greater than 0, which is to say the sift up item has not reached the top of the heap. In every iteration of the loop, the parent index p is computed and the items at k and p are compared. The if statement checks whether the k item is greater than the p item. If so, the items are swapped and k is bumped up to the next level, in preparation for the next iteration. If not, the break statement exits the loop. That's it for sift up. Next, let's work on sift down. Let's do a deletion in this example and see how the array storage changes when the sift down is done, which will help us build our code. When 18 is removed from the top of the heap, it is replaced by the item that is in the last node, or the rightmost node in the last level, which is 3. The array changes accordingly, with 3 taking up the first position. Also, there is one more unused space in the array because of the vacancy left by 3, and this corresponds to one fewer node in the heap. We're now ready to start sifting 3 down the heap. We will use an index k to track the position of 3 as it makes its way down the heap. k starts at 0. Index l is the position of the left child of 3 at 2k plus 1, which is 1 and index r is the position of the right child of 3 at 2k plus 2, which is 2. The items 10 and 15 at these positions are compared. Another index max will point to the maximum of the children, which is 15 in this case. The k item 3 is then compared against the max item 15, and because it is less, is swapped with 15. Sift down will now continue one level down in the heap. Correspondingly, in the array, the tracking index k will take the place of max in preparation for the next iteration. Repeating this process, l is set to 5 and r is set to 6. The items at these positions are 6 and 8. They're compared, and since 8 is greater, max is set to 6. Then the k item 3 is compared with the max item 8, and since 3 is less, it is swapped with 8. Sift down will continue at the next level, so k takes the place of max, ready for the next iteration. At this level, 3 has only one child, 4. Notice that if there is only one child, it must be the left child, since levels are filled with nodes from left to right without any gaps. So the index L, computed as 2k plus 1, is set to 13. But 2k plus 2, which is 14, is outside the bounds of the array, which implies there is no right child. Since there isn't a right child, there is no comparison between children, and max is set directly to L. Then the k item 3 is compared with the max item 4, which leads to a swap. Following this, k is set to max. 
In the next iteration, L is computed to be 2 times 13 plus 1, which is 27, outside the bounds of the array. This means the K item does not have a left child, which can only happen if it is at a leaf node. And this brings an end to the sift down process. Here's the code for the sift down method, putting together everything we have learned in the preceding discussion. K starts out at 0, and L is computed as 2K plus 1. The while loop spins as long as the left child index L is inside the bounds of the array list items in which the heap entries are stored. In the code, we set max to L right off the bat and then compute R as L plus 1, which is the same as 2K plus 2 since L is already 2K plus 1. If there is in fact a right child, which is determined by checking if R is inside the array list bounds, then the right and left children are compared. If the right child is greater than max, which was originally set to L, is incremented by 1, which sets it to R. Otherwise, max remains at L. The next if statement compares the K item against the max item, and if the former is less, a switch takes place. Following this, K is set to max, and L is recomputed in preparation for the next iteration. On the other hand, if the K item is not less than the max item, sift down should stop, which is implemented by breaking out of the while loop. Okay, I think we're all set to finish up the implementation. Let's move on to the heap class. Here's the code for the heap class. I created a package called tree to hold the class since the heap is conceptually a tree structure. The heap class contains items of the generic type t, where the t objects lend themselves to being compared for equality, less than or more than, using the compared to method. The items of the heap are stored in an array list so that an application can add as many items as needed without limit. The heap constructor sets up a new array list of default initial capacity. Here's the code for sift up that you have already seen. Notice that the sift up method is declared private because it is not to be called directly from an application but only from within the insert process. The insert method is fairly straightforward. The new item is first added to the end of the array list with the add method, then sifted up with a call to the sift up method. Moving on, you've already seen the code for the sift down process as well. Again, this method is declared private so as to not be accessible from applications only from the delete process. The delete method takes a little more doing than insert since there are some special conditions to be checked. First off, the method throws a no such element exception if the heap is empty. The second special condition happens when the heap has only one item. In this case, the item, which is at the first position of the array list, is removed and returned. If neither of these conditions is true, then there are at least two items in the heap, and deletion proceeds as you have learned. The first item, or the top of the heap, is saved in a variable called hold. The last item is removed and written into the first position, and sift down is called. When sift down returns, the saved deleted item is returned from the method. The rest of the implementation of the heap class is a set of convenience methods to return the size of the heap, to tell if a heap is empty or not, and to return a string representation of the items in the heap using the ArrayList method toString on the items object. Let's now take a look at a simple application that exercises the heap implementation. I call this application heap app. We start by creating a new heap object for integers. A scanner will read input the user types at the terminal to add integers one at a time to the heap. For every integer input by the user, the heap's insert method is called on the HP object to insert it, following which the heap is printed. When the user enters done, the insertion sequence ends. In the second while loop, the items in the heap are deleted one at a time as long as the heap is not empty, and both deleted item and the resulting heap are printed. Okay, 
let's run the application. First, I want to make sure that it works even if the user does not input any integers. So let's start it up. And right off the bat, I'm going to type done. There's no output, which is exactly as expected. The first while loop is not entered at all, and neither is the second, and nothing is printed. Let's run it again. And this time with a single integer input, say 1. And then let's type done. Notice that the heap was printed with 1 in it. And then after done was entered, it deleted the 1, which left an empty heap. And that was the end of the application. Let's do this one more time, entering a few more things. Let's start with 4, then 3, and then 5. Notice in the heap array listing that 5 is now at the front of the array, which means the top of the heap, followed by 3 and 4. And you can use the array listing to imagine the heap structure. And you know that 5 is at the top, its left child is 3, and its right child is 4. So once we hit done, we have a sequence of deletes. 5 comes out first, leaves 4 and 3 in the heap. Next out is 4. Last out is 3. So the heap items are deleted in decreasing order of values, which is exactly what we expect. OK, we're all done. You learned a lot in this lesson. Hope you enjoyed it. I know I sure did. The heap is one of my most favorite data structures of all. See you later.